Hello there and welcome to our nightly news program coming to you live on all 24 news here in Algiers. Next are today's top stories. Algerian president embarks on a two-day state visit to Portugal. Top on the agenda are strengthening friendship, cooperation and good neighborliness between the two countries. An Algerian community hails the measures taken for the benefit there. Also coming up, three Palestinians are killed in new Zionist aggression on the Balata camp. Also ahead, the president of the Cape Verde supports holding a referendum on self-determination in Western Sahara as Moroccan occupation increases face of brutal repression against the Sahrawi people. And the death toll from the fighting in Sudan rises to more than 900 dead and the UN warns against ethnic cleansing in the country. Hello again and welcome to the details. First off in our news, Algerian President Abdelmajid Taboun arrived in the Portuguese capital Lisbon on a two-day state visit. President Taboun is accompanied by an important ministerial delegation on this visit as part of strengthening the historical relations of friendship, cooperation and good neighborliness between the two countries to push them towards new horizons for the benefit of the two peoples. Algerian President Abdelmajid Taboun described Portugal as a friendly country in the fullest sense of the word, indicating that the Portuguese member or remember the positions and virtues of Algeria. President Taboun, when receiving representatives of the Algerian community in Portugal, said that the visit gives a new impetus to relations through the conclusion of new agreements and the consolidation of ties between the two countries, stressing that Algeria focuses on belonging to the African, Arab and Mediterranean region. On the other hand, President Taboun affirmed that a meeting with Algerian community members reassures nationals abroad about the situation in the country and that it's a good opportunity to listen to their various concerns. في البلد التي تقيم به حقيقة أن دولة البرتغال دولة تربطنا بها أواصر تاريخية قديمة جدا ودولة صديقة بيتم المعنى رغبتهم ورغبتنا أننا نقوي العلاقات مع بعض ما رغبين في ال تواصل مع الجزائر اقتصاديا وسياسيا واحنا نفسي عندنا نفس الرغبه The President of the Republic speaking to the Algerian community in Portugal recalled of the measures taken by the Algerian state to facilitate the conditions of Algerian nationals there or the measures taken for the community's retirement benefit in Algeria, announcing his intention to take other measures that is to subsidize the prices of tickets this summer. بالنسبه لكم توما بالنسبه ل عايشين في الغربة نحاول نحاول باش نخفف عليكم الوضع نتاع الغربة هذه باش نسهل الرجوع نتاعكم أو بالأقل الاستثمار تاعكم في بلادكم ولو تبقوا في الغربة و... وديروا مؤسسات ولا شركات في بلادكم باش تفيدوا الاقتصاد نتاع نتاع بلادكم بالنسبة ل... اتصال مباشر مع الجزائر فيما يخص الأسعار نتاع التذاكر فيما يخص هذه كل خاضينها بعين الاعتبار إن شاء الله الصيف هذا كذلك تكون فيه أسعار منخفضة جدا ليكم ما حاولت كذلك باش ما تضيعوا باش ما يضيعش العمل تاعكم هنا باش تكون لكم فرصة كذلك باش تتقاضى وتقاعد في البلاد المهم ما ناش ناسينكم ما جزائريين وتبعدوا لا تقربوا تبقوا جزائريين وجزائر بلادكم و...
The head of state speaking on Algeria's partnership with Portugal said that his visit constitutes an opportunity to catch up on the relations between the two countries and that they are open for partnership in any field of endeavor. Portugal is not a good thing. We will not be able to do it. We will not be able to do it. We will not be able to do it. واقع هذا هو الجزائر كانت فقدت لمعان تاعها الحمد لله الامور رجعت وتتمتع بالاحترام تاع الجميع احنا البرتغال احنا متفتحين اللي يحبوها نديروها مع بعض نشتركوا مع بعض في مشاريع نشتركوا مع بعض في في, البي... في النفط في, ال... في بناء السفن في البناء السكنات في Representatives of the Algerian community in Portugal hailed the importance that Algeria attaches to its community abroad. They emphasized that Portugal is a country that offers many opportunities for partnerships that should be exploited by Algeria. Members of the Algerian community expressed their readiness to contribute to the development of, of the Algerian economy and to transfer their expertise to their home country. I began to feel the difference since the election of Algerian President Mr. Abdel Majid Taboun. Algerians living abroad will always remain indivisible from their country, and we are interested and concerned with the development of our beloved Algeria. The Algerian community abroad and in Portugal is part of the Algerian civil society, as it is its extension abroad. Algerian community abroad loves and misses the country. Algeria and Portugal have a varied partnership based within its general framework on friendship, cooperation and good neighborliness agreement concluded between the two countries in the year 2015, in addition to a gas contract extending to 2029, according to which Algeria supplies Portugal with more than 80% of its needs. To other topical news now, Algeria commemorated the 75th anniversary of the Palestinian Nakba at the International Conference Center Abdel Latif Rahal here in Algiers. The event, which gathered many participants, brings Arab-Palestinian reunification to the limelight, that is, and affirms Algeria's unwavering positions towards the just cause. Zara Fajani reports. The proceedings of the International Conference commemorating the 75th anniversary of the Palestinian Nakba began in Algeria for the first time on Monday under the theme Nakba, a continuous crime and the right to return home is just. The event was held in the presence of government members, several Palestinian figures and representatives of various Palestinian factions in addition to national and international bodies. Commemorating the Nakba in Algeria is an unprecedented initiative. Algeria affirms with this presence that it has always stood with Palestine, whether it is unjust or oppressed. We thank Algeria. On this occasion, the just cause of Palestinian people and their daily suffering were at the core of this event, in which the violations of the Zionist entity, including the assault on their property and identity symbols, were also tackled. One of the most prominent signs of legitimate support for our cause is what was achieved in Algeria at the reunification conference for the sake of achieving Palestinian national unity, which was held from October 11 to October 13, 2022. Palestinian liberation requires unity. For this reason, Algeria has always prioritized the reunification of Palestinian ranks, an initiative hailed by all Palestinians. We must end the division. It's true that there is difficulties, but the Zionists are no longer setting for peace process. Rather, they have destroyed it and refused to implement the resolutions of international legitimacy. The Palestinian people and leadership have no choice but to implement what Algeria has accomplished in reunification towards achieving national unity. 
All in all, the International Conference on Palestinian Nakba, on its first edition, comes to reaffirm Algeria's unwavering support to the most pivotal Arab cause, Palestine. In related news, three Palestinians were killed and six others were injured during a storming operation by the Zionist occupation forces to the Balata refugee camp in the city of Nablus in the occupied West Bank. At dawn Monday, that is. Islam said with more. Equipped with heavy weaponry and armored vehicles with snipers deployed on rooftops, during a large-scale attack, Zionist forces stormed Balata refugee camp in Nablus on Monday morning, killing three Palestinians and injuring several others. One of them is in critical condition, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. The occupation forces fully surrounded this area. They came in huge numbers and were distributed everywhere. Countries keep their silence and watch us suffering. We have become poor and helpless. They are killing our children, and they are those who are imprisoned. The occupation forces do what they want, and the people watching. We want protection. We want our human rights. The occupation soldiers also broke into many houses in the camp and blew one up, injuring a young boy and a girl and causing damage to nearby homes. They stormed some houses and at the time of their withdrawal, the explosion occurred. They did not inform any of the neighbors that there was an explosion, so children and women were extremely terrified. The occupation demolishes yearly dozens of houses in the Palestinian-occupied territories, displacing Palestinian families and leaving children and women without shelter. As for Balata assault, it comes right after the so-called Zionist national security and settlers' incursion to the Holy Al-Aqsa Mosque. This act was strongly condemned by Arab associations and countries. Algeria, through its foreign ministry, reaffirmed Algeria's full solidarity with the brotherly Palestinian people and their just cause. Algeria condemns in the strongest terms the storming of Al-Aqsa Mosque by an official of the Zionist occupation under the protection of the occupying forces in a flagrant and repeated violation of international law and decisions of relevant international legality. Algeria reaffirms its full solidarity with the brotherly Palestinian people as well as its constant position in favor of the just Palestinian cause for the recovery of its legitimate rights, in particular the right to establish its independent state with Al-Quds al-Sharif as capital city. Since the beginning of the year, the Zionist violence caused the death of 156 Palestinians, including 36 in the Gaza Strip. Among the martyrs are also 26 minors. President of Cape Verde, Jose Maria Neves, declared his support for the holding of a referendum in Western Sahara so that the people of this region can decide their future and their destiny. During his opening speech held at the presidential residence in the capital, Praia, during the start of the celebrations of Africa Day, he pointed to the conflict in Western Sahara as being one of Africa's unresolved issues. He also added that Western Sahara is a former Spanish colony and a founding member of the African Union that is awaiting the resolution of the UN to be implemented. And in a related story, the Moroccan occupation forces have increased the pace of their brutal repression and suffocating restrictions against Sahrawi activists in the occupied Sahrawi cities since the beginning of this month. Coinciding with the celebrations commemorating the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Polisari Front and the outbreak of the armed struggle. The Sahrawi Commission against the Moroccan occupation said that the Mahzan regime mobilized all its forces to suppress any manifestation of celebration aspects or any expression in support of the struggle of the Sahrawi people. Spanish authorities have launched an investigation into Morocco's involvement in buying fraudulent electoral votes in favor of a political party in Melilla in order to win its loyalty to Rabat. A major Spanish newspaper published identical reports confirming that the police and intelligence services had opened a detailed probe into what is known as a voting conspiracy. According to reports, Morocco was suspected of being involved in buying dozens of votes to support a pro-Rabat party inside the city.
back to Algeria. A friendship parliamentary group of Algeria and Zambia was installed on Sunday in the Algerian National People's Assembly. According to a statement by the lower house of the Algerian parliament, this inauguration is of particular importance as it coincides with the visit of the Speaker of the Zambian parliament to Algeria as head of a delegation that includes the head of the parliamentary group for friendship with Algeria. For his part, the chairman of the parliamentary group appreciated the coordination and support provided by the two countries in the African parliament, especially the consultation on security and political issues to address terrorist threats and contribute to the establishment of security and peace in the continent. The UN Special Representative of the Secretary General for Libya, Abdullahi Bathili, was in Mesrata where he met with members of the Municipal Council and members of the House of Representatives in order to discuss the political crisis. More with Salman Asib. The UN Special Representative of Secretary General for Libya, Abdullahi Bathili, went to the city of Misrata, where he held a meeting with members of the Municipal Council academics and members of the House of Representatives to listen to their views on solving the political crisis. I was encouraged today to hear the open and honest concerns of young people and civil society representatives in Misrata who emphasized their frustration with the delayed elections and distrust of the current institutions. On his Twitter account, the UN also expressed his respect for women and youth mobilization and voices, including their impressive statements and commitment to establishing unified and legitimate institutions to lead Libya, including civil society organizations and United Nations mission for promoting peace in the country. The voices of young people, women and civil society organizations are crucial and should be decisive in shaping the future of Libya. United Nations support mission in Libya continues to advocate for their inclusion at all levels of decision making so that all benefit from peace and stability. All Libyans are entitled to peace, prosperity and stability, which can happen only through inclusive and transparent elections. Batili also heard the worrying stories that civil society organizations were being silenced and urged all Libyan leaders to protect and provide space for civil society organization as an integral part of society. Increasingly, I also hear the worrying stories that civil society organizations are being silenced. I urge all Libyan leaders to protect and provide space for civil society organizations as an integral part of society. It's worth noting that during the meeting, university academics and members of the House of Representatives expressed their concern about unfair allocation of national resources to certain regions and governorates at the expense of others, and the impact of foreign interference in internal Libyan affairs. Meanwhile, Batili stressed that Libyans have the capacity and natural resources to overcome the crisis, referring to Libya's position as economic power and a leading regional actor. With Libya still, the president of the Presidential Council, Mohamed El Menfi, as the Supreme Commander of the Army, discussed on Sunday with the Chief of the General Staff of the Libyan Army, Lieutenant General Mohamed Al Haddad, the importance of strengthening the role of the military institution in maintaining security and extending state control, especially at border crossings, in addition to discussing the situation of all military units. During the meeting, Al Menfi stressed the need to intensify military efforts along land borders of the country, especially in light of the circumstances that some neighboring countries are going through. Hours before the Saudi-U.S. broker ceasefire, residents of many Sudanese cities could still hear gunshots and airstrikes in the city of Khartoum and the surrounding areas. At another level, UN representative to Sudan conflict warned of the consequences of this crisis. Details with the Samaria. Hours before a week-long ceasefire aimed at allowing delivery of aid took effect, Sudan's army had conducted air strikes in the capital Khartoum with heavy artillery, making the situation more complex for the Sudanese people. The army also carried out air strikes into the evening, targeting vehicles from mobile units of the rapid support forces that have been operating across residential areas in the capital since the conflict erupted. We need both sides to respect the ceasefire, to allow civilians to move around and to get aid for hospitals. 
Both sides pledged to abide by the ceasefire starting from quarter to ten local time. However, fears raise about the violation of the ceasefire, which is relatively the first to be formally agreed following negotiations. We want an agreement. We want those in power to agree. We are all hungry. Children, the elderly, everyone is suffering from the war. We have no more water. We are really hungry. They have to reach an agreement. For his part, the United Nations envoy to Sudan, Volker Parthe, has warned on Monday of the growing ethnicization of the military conflict that broke out in Sudan last month and the potential impact on neighboring states. Lives and infrastructure have been destroyed. The growing ethnicization of the conflict risks to expand and prolong it with implications for the region. The agreed short-term ceasefire could and should also pave the way for talks for a durable cessation of hostilities. Volker Parthes also told the Security Council that preventing the escalation or ethnicization of the conflict was among the UN's top priorities. It's worth noting that the ceasefire agreement which was brokered by Saudi Arabia and the United States was signed for humanitarian purposes. Both parties have agreed to stop fighting for winning ground in the 48 hours before the truce. However, Sudanese civilians have reported many gunshots and airstrikes in the country. To other news now, on Monday, the Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi appointed the Revolutionary Guards Commander as the new Secretary of the nation's top security organization. Ali Akbar Ahmadian replaced veteran leader and prominent Gulf negotiator Ali Shamkani. According to Iranian presidency website, Ali Akbar Ahmadian was appointed as the Secretary of the Supreme National Security Council by the decree of the President. Ahmadian, who studied at the National Defense University, was in charge of the Strategic Center of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps before his appointment to the new post. The Russian military reported on Monday that targets at Dnepro airport were hit overnight with long-range precision guided air launch weapons. Meanwhile, Ukrainian officials in Dnepro said that at least eight people were injured and dozens of buildings were damaged as a result of the Russian airstrikes in the southeastern region of the country. European Union's foreign policy high representative Joseph Borrell stated on Sunday that the European Union finally decided to provide Ukraine with F-16 fighter jets. Speaking ahead of the G7 summit held in Hiroshima in Japan, Borrell confirmed that the Ukrainian pilots have already started the training for the fighter jets. Borrell also emphasized on the need for speeding up the process of providing more ammunition to Ukraine. Turkey's third plate election or third place election candidate endorsed President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Monday, boosting the incumbent and intensifying the challenges for opposition candidate Kemal Kılıç Darulu in a Sunday runoff vote. Sinan Ogan, a hardline nationalist who was little known among the broader public before the campaign, won 5.2 percent support in the initial presidential election on May 14th, prompting some analysts to call him a potential kingmaker for the runoff. China's foreign ministry on Monday urged the United States to have the right understanding of China, meet it halfway, and bring bilateral relations back on track. Mao Neng, a ministry spokesperson, made the remarks in response to U.S. President Joe Biden, suggesting that a shift in U.S.-China relations could occur soon. U.S. President Joe Biden on Sunday said the group of seven nations agreed in their approach to China and called for diversifying their supply chains so they are not dependent on one country. We urge the U.S. side to correct its perception of China, stop interfering in China's internal affairs, stop undermining China's sovereignty, security and development interests, meet China halfway and take practical actions to put U.S.-China relations back on the right track. For more news making headlines around the world, let's follow the news in brief. An armed attack at a restaurant Ecuador's coast left six people dead and half a dozen wounded on Saturday night. The incident occurred in the town of Montanita, a famous surfing beach in the province of Santa Elena on Ecuador's central coast. Thousands of unions representatives took the street of Brussels on Monday to denounce social dumping and what they see as a tax on right to strike. Police said 80,000 people took part in the peaceful march which was co-organized by Belgium's three largest trade unions. 
The head of the World Health Organization on Monday urged countries to carry out the reforms needed to prepare for the next pandemic and honor a previous commitment to boost financing for the UN Health Agency. A massive fire broke out at Manila's historical central post office late on Sunday night and lasted over seven hours. The fire began at the general service office located in the basement of the building and the estimated cost of damage was $5.3 million. Royal Madrid forward Vinicius Jr. met with club president Florentino Perez on Monday after racist chants were hurled at the Brazilian player during Sunday's match against Valencia. It's the 10th episode of alleged racism against Vinicius that has been reported to prosecutors this season. And that was Sofian Kenturi reporting. And with this, our program comes to a close. For more stories, visit our social media platforms. Thank you for keeping it here on our channel. Till next time, take care.